Hello everyone, I'm Phoenix Tremaine and this is going to be my review of Loose. Now before we get started, um, please take a minute to subscribe. If you have subscribed, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Please hit that like button because every time you hit that like button, lets you two know this is a good place to get your reviews for your movies, TV, and music. Um, I'm trying to really build up this, this particular channel. I have two channels. One is youtube.com backslash web series and movies, one word. Um, that one I have 21k subscribers, almost 22, and so that channel is doing really great, and I appreciate it. If you are a subscriber of my other channel, this one is going to focus on uh, movies, um, movie reviews, and music reviews, and maybe some pop culture. So hopefully you'll enjoy both channels. I can build this one up too. Um, and check the, the description box where you'll find my social media. You can please take a chance and follow me over there. and You'll get lots of entertainment news information. Things that make you laugh. It's funny. It's informative. It's a good place to be. And now we're going to talk about Loose. Loose is the story of um, a kid who was at seven years old. Um, I guess he was in a war-torn country or whatever. He was, ad he was adopted by this, this white couple. And um, now... Over the years, he is now like in in high school, about to go to college. He's done very well academically, and his teacher Harriet Wilson uh, discover has a, discovers a very disturbing report that he did, and she searches his locker and finds fireworks, and she feels like that he potentially could be going down the wrong path, and that he's. Ex his, his based on a report she feels like he could potentially be a danger to the school and her people so she contacts his parents well his mother and lets her know she found the fireworks and gives her the book report and then they're like oh no my son's perfect he would never do anything like that and and that's pretty much and then Luz finds out that his history teacher who you're already mad at um, because he feels like she put him on a pedestal whereas his other black friend um, pretty much th threw him to the wolves and got him kicked off, off the team they were on and he sort of like wants to get back at her for what he did to what she did to his friend um, because of some allegations of potential assault and we'll get to that so that's pretty much the gist of it. It's um, Luce versus Harriet, and then how the parents react to um, finding out that he may not be the perfect child that they thought he was going to be. And um, I'm going to do this review in two parts. The first part, I'm just going to tell you how I felt about the movie. I'm not going to give you any spoilers. And then I'm going to go to spoiler territory. I'll give you a warning first. I'll go a little deeper into why I feel the way I feel about the movie. This movie can be found on Hulu. And um, I would recommend it. This is one of those. It's sort of like a film that's part art house and part thriller. They sort of took taking those two things. Like when you think of an art house film. People who love an art house film usually find that they're artistic, they can be abstract. These are movies that try to make you think, they don't necessarily give you all the answers. And everybody doesn't get it because it's not like a straight linear line of how, of the train of thought when writing this movie. So a lot of art house films are very emotional and personal and dive deep into different things that people may not want to really get into or may not or maybe the ugly side of life or you know it's just a lot uh it's a is a very niche genre and a lot of people either understand an art house movie or they don't i say this movie is part art house because it feels like a thriller but the movie is actually deeper than your typical thriller but the problem I have with it is once I saw the ending it didn't go deep enough um, I know that is it's designed to inspire conversation but we spend all these time with these characters and you don't get 
really deep to the very end. Um, and there's this big conversation that's had between Octavia Spencer's uh, character Harriet Wilson and Kelvin Harrison Jr.'s character Luce. And I didn't realize that this is really the actual climax of the movie, bringing home all of the different points of view of how we got to this movie's ending. And it let me down. I feel like they didn't stick the landing. If this is your point of view that you really wanted to, you know, bring home, um, I felt like what we got before it was light and fluffy and it wasn't deep enough to really take us to this conversation. That there's a lot of scenes missing that or scenes that were in a movie that could have been really done differently because a lot of characters say things without talking and you have to assume what the character feels. You have to guess how the character feels. Um, and that's when I say we're in art house territory because sometimes we just want to have a character have an outburst and express how they feel. And this movie does not do that. No one is very expressive about how they actually feel, except for one character, Marsha Stephanie's character Rosemary, who I'll talk about her a little bit later. I actually think she should get some awards for what she did in this movie. And, and so that's pretty much the gist of it. I like the movie. It was a decent thriller. It's on Hulu. If you have Hulu, then you should really watch this movie. But I say you should watch this movie with a group of friends. If those friends like to talk about colorism, you know, racial disparities, um, uh, colonialism, colonizing, um, you know, race relations between black people and white people, um, rape. If you want, if you want to, if you have conversations about those things, about rape culture, and and. It's just a whole lot of different things that are presented to the audience, but they don't actually allow the characters to express how they feel about these issues, except at the very end, you really get, at least Octavia Spencer's point of view, and how she schools loose at the end. Um, but I'm getting really close to spoiler territory, so I'm going to end it here. Like I said, watch it on Hulu. It's definitely a good movie, but like I said, when it comes to the ending, that's going to be the controversial part. Some people are going to feel like, brilliant. Other people are like, where's the rest of the movie? Where's my ending? Did I really sit here for almost two hours and that's it? You're going to have those polarized reactions. You're probably going to be on one side of the fence or the other, and I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of people in the middle. So now we're in spoiler territory. If you want to watch the movie and then come back and see the rest of the review, fine. Um, but I'm going to go to line, down the line and talk about the different characters. The, um, Calvin Harrison um, Jr. as Luce, he was good in his role. Um, there were places I thought they were going to go with the character. They didn't go. There were moments in the movie that I felt were uh, homoerotic-ish. And when we saw who he had sex with at the end, I was like, oh, okay, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be that guy. And it wasn't. I was like, oh. <laughs> so I guess the curse will be straight. I, I, I really thought they were gonna go in the opposite direction with that, that, that uh, tidbit. Um, his battle with Octavia Spencer's character, Harry Wilson, was very um, tropey. There were a lot of thriller tropes that they used in this film. You can see them all in the trailers that build up to nothing. Um, he did a lot of things criminally to Octavia Spencer's character that he never actually pays for. Um, and I know in life, you know, every criminal doesn't pay for the acts that they commit, but some of the things he did, I felt like, okay, so now the parents know for sure that he's a danger. Uh, and also thought at one point he was going to have sex with his mother. 
it was just that that kind of tension was there. I don't know if it was meant to be there. I don't know if I read too much into it, but she's watching him have sex, and you know when he's she's invading his private space, and and they were just like he's calling her by her first name, and I just like I said. There were a lot of tropes, so I felt like those tropes were going to go in those directions, but the tropes just went in conventional thriller, uh, thriller trope directions. Um, and I say tropes because it's things we've all seen before. There's nothing in this movie that you haven't seen before. It's all been done before. The stuff that's just pure thriller, we all seen this before, except normally in a thriller we get a better climax. Um, we have Naomi Watts who was playing Amy Eggert, his mother. Um, her character was all over the place. There's parts in the movie where she's like, I love my son, he's the greatest, we gotta support him. Then there's the other part, oh no, he's a rapist. Um, you know, I'm scared of what he may do next. Then, you know, she's like, oh no, you know, we're in front of people now, we gotta protect him and he's gotta have a good future. I don't care if he might blow up the school with fireworks or or rape some chicks you know you know we gotta stick by him and her character can be polarizing because she never really I never really felt like she had a conclusion to how she really felt about the situation you know, in the end, she's like, um, all right, you did this. We're going to keep it a secret. Um, I hope you have a good future. I almost felt like she was telling him, hey, you better go to college, get out of my house, and I'm not going to be dealing with this <laughs> anymore. So we made it this far, you know, for 11 years raising you, and now there's going to be somebody else's problem. I also felt like she kind of felt that way, too. Um, and then you had uh, Tim Roth playing his father, who was the same wishy-washy parent that she was. In one scene, you know, he's got to pay for his for what he's done. The next scene, you know, we're a family. You know, this is the only kid we've had, and you know, we chose we didn't have our own family. And you know, he's looking at baby pictures and whatnot, like. He's all over the place too. Um, I don't feel like they stuck the end. The, they stuck the landing on uh, two characters. Octavia Spencer character Harriet. She kind of came to a full circle mode where her character looked loose in the eye and said, I know who you are. I know what you did. I also understand why you did what you did. And this is why what you did was wrong because you thought you knew life. But you just, you just figured this out. You know, I already got this. I've been here longer than you. I know how race works in America. You think you know how race works in America, but that ain't how it is, baby. But you're going to learn the hard way. That's the ending of the movie. Um, but we don't know. Did she keep her job? Did she lose her job? You know, who the hell knows? Um, Andrea Bang, who played Stephanie, was the worst characterized character in the film. This character was gang raped. Um, it was dark, so she wasn't sure who participated. Her boyfriend was there. He claimed he saved her. She described without saying it that she was roofied. And she's like, I believe he wasn't involved in that. You know, but she still believes the rest of his friends. You know, their hands were all over me. She's sitting at the table crying, telling her mother, his mother, this whole story. And she is so in love with him that it's sort of like General Hospital Luke and Laura where Luke raped Laura next thing you know they're getting married and they're like this big super couple the wedding was like the most watched wedding on a soap in America you know <laughs> you know the way these she kinda was the Laura of the story you know she was violated but she loved him so she was like eh, I got gang raped but oh well things happen um, at least he's talking to me again um, as someone who was molested as a kid this is not 
what I, the way it was written didn't feel authentic. You know, even if she didn't think he did it and that he saved her, um, the way it all played out, how she was helping him um, get over on things and it just didn't feel authentic as the character clearly was upset by what happened but then they show her smoking weed with his friends chilling and these are the guys that gang raped you and she's just like cool with it because at least she's with them do you see a problem with what I just said um, then we have Marsha Stephanie who played Rosemary um, she did very good as uh, Harriet's mentally ill sister who they there were so many unresolved plot points like you know they didn't even say how Luz managed to get her out of the treatment center she was in to get her to the school they showed he was late like there's no cameras there there's no I guess signing out process and he didn't even have a car so what happened you know but I said she deserved an award because as a mentally challenged character she did very well and she was basically fearless in a scene where she is in the school and she gets completely naked in front of probably 50 or 60 extras most of them teens um, and is able to go completely naked. You can see everything. Every ounce of her body can be seen. And um, she just totally goes for it. Hopefully she had to do a lot of takes. But she just totally goes for it. And um, as an actor, um, I'm sure it was sort of liberating and scary at the same time. But, you know, a lot of times there are actors that say, uh, they wanted me to get nude in this film and it didn't make sense. Now, we know a lot of people who have mental illness have done that. There's plenty of videos they've shown where a person has just taken off all their clothes and just did something completely um, out of the ordinary. And um, that was just a good, heartbreaking scene um, when uh, Harry walked away from, the, from that particular scene and didn't even pick her clothes up because she was escorted by the police. Didn't even pick her clothes up or anything like that or even try to get her to put her clothes back on or anything like that like most people would normally do especially in that public was setting at her job. Um, I thought that she could have been a little more a part of the scene but I felt like as an actor and definitely whatever was in, what was in the script, this is what they wanted to happen. So they made Mar Harriet a little too restrained for me. In this moment, she saw what was going on. It almost like slow motion. Um, she could have grabbed her, took her outside, done a whole lot of things. But she just kind of stood to the side and let whatever was going to happen, happen. Um, I blame the direction for her not even trying. Uh, we got Nobert Leo, who plays Dan Towson. He's the school principal, who doesn't really care about what Luce is doing as long as um, his debate team brings money to the school. That's all he cares about. And so they are, all of these white folks, uh, Amy, Peter, Dan, have decided that Luce is that uh, one black kid that they're going to put all their hopes and dreams behind and push forward above all of the other kids and say, look, we stick you in this pedestal. Now be perfect. Yeah, that person. Um, and that's real life. It happens all the time. And then we had finally Stro played by Deshaun uh, Meeks. And he's the black kid that they decide isn't going to make it. Whereas Luce is a uh, suburban kid raised by white white parents. They like, you're the designated black person that we're going to take you out. Whereas Stro is more of an urban teen. And they're like, oh, your life wasn't going to go anywhere anyway. So you get the short end of the stick. We're taking all of the things that could have helped your future and we're going to take them from you. 
and then we're going to let you watch um, as we build him up. So that was a very powerful statement. Um, happens all the time. So like I said, this movie has a lot of racial things in it that can spur lots of conversations. But in closing, they did not stick the landing on the ending. Um, I felt like a lot of these characters had more to say. We shouldn't have to be sitting here trying to figure out the meaning of this and the meaning of that and trying and having conversations amongst ourselves about things that if the characters were allowed to go deeper we could have better conversations because even the things that'll go over people's heads like the parents couldn't pronounce Luce's actual name so they called him Luce in something they could pronounce you know they brought that up at least twice but I thought at least in his speech at the end that he may have given some inkling that that bothered him because clearly it bothered him it would bother anybody um, I mean just like slave masters you know changing African names to John William whatever you know so there's lots of things to discuss and talk about this movie um, I didn't expect to talk about the movie for 21 minutes but I'm gonna wrap this up before it's a half hour um, so that's why I said it's a good movie spurs conversation but as a writer you know I wish that you could have still had your art house feel but I felt like the actors never got the moments they deserved everything stayed so understated the actors never got the moments they deserved to really um, flesh out who their characters were rather than have the audience feel like they are tropey archetypes like a horror movie has different archetypes of well this is this type of person and this is that type of person that's what we're left with we're not left with three dimensional characters that feel like real people we feel like it's like an essay that we're reading and it's two dimensional you know where you know it wants to be three dimensional but no it's flat it's a flat surface with very few nuances which would have made this a much better movie if they went deeper and really had the characters explode and go in on how they're feeling because all of these characters are left feeling like they're still holding everything in and so the audience is left with okay well it's, I guess it's over <laughs> here's the credits you know and I thought since they didn't have any kind of moment for like the thriller ending um, I felt like his speech at the end could have been a much more powerful statement to really punctuate the ending of the movie but instead it took the easy way out a cop out really and didn't allow the characters to really hit that landing you know they didn't they didn't stick the landing they hit the floor and then he fell and then he got up dusted himself off and said the end and that's what I'm gonna say thanks for watching um, hopefully you enjoyed this interview I mean this review and I'll catch you in the next uh, video